Hi, I'm Peter Rose, founder along with Currency. Consistency over swinging for the fence in your Forex trading. I know both sides of that. After spending 40 years in real estate investment and being a millionaire, I, I, I'm used to big money. I'm used to understanding um, how to plan a money-making campaign to build wealth, also to provide income because my, my uh, properties were uh, investment properties, uh, multifamily buildings, I'm just a small real estate investor. You don't have to have gazillions of properties in order to make money as long as you know the rules of the game and you know what to do. So when I got into currency trading, and I've been looking at the, the uh, currency market since 2007 as an academic exercise because I was still doing real estate, um, and then I decided in 2012 to try a couple of mini accounts. Of course, you know the story on that. I blew out of those and thought I needed more education and the whole sad story of the whole thing. But regardless of that, I'm not coming into this at 23 years of age. I don't have 20 years to compound this stuff. So in my 60s is when I started looking at currencies. I'm 75 now. Um, so yeah, it's mid 60s. I don't have 20 years to compound, but when you get older, <laughs> you still think you're 20 or 30 years old. So <clears throat> my goal was to try to take a decently sized account and try to build that in um, four or five years to a million dollars. Is that feasible? Well, I was starting with a six figure account. Sure, it is feasible to do that. However, in order to push the envelope, no matter the size of the account, you have to push the envelope. You have to do things that are aggressive, more aggressive than they would be if you had a 10 year period of time or a 20 year period of time in order to consistently grow your, your income. Well, you know that. I mean, that's just logic. If anybody's telling you any different, oh, you're gonna get into real estate and in you know, 18 months you're gonna be a millionaire, you know, you know that would be stupid. These folks that get into flipping houses, and they put three or four hundred thousand dollars into buying the house, and then they're going to put another hundred and fifty into it, and they hope to sell it for you know, <laughs> a million two. Um, they have no clue, and they, even if they're successful a couple of times and they build up a large account, now they're trying to do three properties at the same time. They're in hock to the bank to two million dollars. They've got crew issues and all of a sudden some economic blip happens and and they're gone. But the same is true in currency trading. So many of the people that are out there teaching are basing their teaching on their 200 or 500 to 1 leverage. It's just not practical for you to do that as a beginner or even an intermediate trader. It just isn't, because you don't know when to put, put the gas down. It's like learning how to drive a car. Somebody has to be there and say, that's the gas pedal, but don't push it down so that the, the dial reads 80 miles an hour, because you don't know how to control the car. So if you're trading a $10,000, if you're trading um, uh, one full lot, which is um, $100,000 worth of currency, now you need a $10,000 bank or a $7,000 bank based on the margin. The margin is $6,300 right now in some of the major pairs. Six, let's call it $6,000. So you could trade a full lot at $7,000 or $6,500. But that only gives you $500 of margin, I mean of uh, runway. $500 again at $10 a pip is 50 pips. Once you lose 50 pips, you're not trading that full lot. So you need runway. You need more money. That's why I say if you're going to trade one full lot, although you could do it for $6,300, do it with $10,000. Now, there's a, a, another reason for that. Do you need... I got a wind blowing up here. Hold on a second. My camera will probably fall over. Or you won't be able to hear, the, <laughs> hear me talking with the wind blowing into the mic. I think it's going to rain. We're uh, end of June here of uh, 2024, and it's chilly, <laughs> and it's going to rain. Okay, let's get back to the, to the math. 
I'm saying if you had a $100,000 account and 20% of that is $20,000, but what if you don't need $100,000? <coughs> what if you needed um, $7,000 no, per, per lot? So you'd need $70,000 to make $20,000. Well, now you're dividing 20,000 by 70,000 instead of 20,000 by 100,000. I don't know what that is, 70,000 and 20,000, but it sure the hell isn't 20%. It's far more than that, right? Probably 25%. So you get an, a, a, an automatic boost, but at the risk of leverage. If you want to trade one full lot at $6,500, or $7,000, there's a time when you do that in your trading. That's why you have $10,000, so you've got $4,000 of dry powder. So when you're trading a $100,000 account, and you've got uh, five lots in, and the thing breaks past your, um, your profit target, and you have a runner, now you wanna pour on the gasoline. Well look, you've got eight lots on there, at 10,000, you got $80,000 in there, but you are only really using 6,000, let's say, for margin. How many, if you have $100,000, you divide 6,000 into it, that's the number of lots you can carry, not 10, but it's probably like 18. So now you've got a runner going and you're not fearful about getting stopped out because you've got profit behind what you're putting on. <clears throat> so now you put another eight lots on. Now you're carrying a 16 load instead of the eight based on a, a $6,500 lot. That's how you can use your leverage correctly, but you never, ever go beyond um, 50 to 1. If you're trading $10,000 for 100, you're at 10 to 1. That's what I trade. The possibility of making 20% should be your goal for consistency. You want to always be able to make 20% against your bank. But when the opportunities come to, well, you have a runner, in other words, a, um, a position that's gone past the profit target area. Now, now you can really push it and you, and you can gain more money that way. Now your overall profit of money that you've made against the $10,000 account, instead of being $2,000, might be 3,000. And all of a sudden you end up with a 30% a return. Consistency forms the base of your trading. Anything you get over that, that's where the real money comes from, not the consistency. But if you don't have the consistency, then your P&L will constantly go like this. And that's sort of the problem that I had in starting out and trying to make a million dollars in four years is that my P&L suffered these drastic ups and downs because I was pushing the envelope and looking for that, that breakout. But I wasn't waiting for the breakout because I was trying to load, front load uh, all of my lots so that if I just made profit target, I would get that. I would get my daily thing maybe a thousand dollars or whatever but I was really pushing to get that full load in there but when the break would come and I would lose I'd have my full load on there and I'd go 20 or 30 pips boom well in setting the normal get out of, of, of 10 pips and now you're gonna you're gonna go out with your full load at 30 um, that gives you those gyrations in the P&L Every now and then I would get the big boom, but I would never able to, 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 to hold on to that and to consistently move forward because I wasn't trying to have consistent results. I was swinging for the fence all the time and you can't do that. I've had two or three years where I've been up 80% on my bank until the last quarter of the year where I'm trying to, trying to really push the envelope. I'm looking for that last that last big trade that'll take me another twenty or thirty, forty thousand dollar gain, and boom! It just I was loaded in too heavy and dreaming too hard and lost. 
And so instead, uh, I think it was 2000, see this is 2024. Oh, I think it was uh, <coughs> 22. Um, I had a, one of those 80% gains. going to leave that in because that's just living <laughs> in New England with the wind coming up. Uh, I think 2022 or 23, something like that, 22 I think it was, I was up 80% on my bank in the last uh, quarter of the year, the last three months of the year, and ended up the year 46% ahead instead of 80% or 90% because I took a horrendous hit. Because I wasn't focused on laying the foundation of that consistent building so that as you build consistently you never drop the your value below the consistent level that's the beauty of being consistent that's the secret sauce is you build consistently all the way up but you never drop your account through that consistent gain that you've made uh, more than a certain percentage but that's risk management uh, and, and that's difficult to teach in a video. You know, you have to work with somebody because that becomes a a personal uh, a personal thing as to how you're going to manage that risk based on the goals that you have and your ability level, which is references I've said many times in your win to loss ratio. So the moral of the story, if you've stayed this far is try to be consistent at your trading, and particularly if you're a beginning trader, try to shoot for that 20% level over a period of months, that you're 20% that you're against your bank. <clears throat> but be conservative and make that 20% against, uh, on a full lot, a $10,000 funding, as opposed to a $6,000 funding, because then you're, you're, you're it, you're exaggerating what your skill is. You have to take the leverage out in order to find where your skill is. You can't say, oh, well, I'm making 35% on my money because I'm, I'm levered up a little bit because that's not your skill level in trading. And because you're levered up and you don't have the skill, when things go against you, you'll get flushed out. And I'd hate to see that happen to you. Consistency over swinging for the fence. There's a time for swinging for the fence, but it's always to be consistent. And then you have to have some training in order to understand when to step on the gas. You have to be very careful when you do that because you expose the dome of that consistent profit level that you've taken. You have to put that at risk. And I don't want to go into any more detail than that because I don't want you thinking, oh, I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to do that. Just be consistent with your trading. And if you're consistent over a long enough time frame, a year, you'll be able to figure this stuff out. Because if you're a day trader, you're making three, four hundred trades a, a, a year. So you should be fine. You should be fine. Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading, have a great day and have a great trading day.